Hello, my name is Martin Herold. I'm from Wageningen University and I'm going to deliver to you module 3.2 of the Govsi Gold World Bank FCPF series of uh, training materials. Module 3.2 deals with the data and guidance on developing Red Plus reference levels and it should put you, after you've done the module, in a position to basically be aware of the procedures and the important decisions you have to make when developing um, a Red Plus reference level. The, the lecture is based on a whole bunch of background materials that are provided in these slides. Uh, most of them are online. Quite a few of them are related to decisions of the UN climate conventions because all of this provided here is really driven by the agreements done by countries but there's also a bunch of other further guidance materials uh, interesting readings that should provide you with further information uh, and or in fact have provided important information that have underpinned this lecture so it's collective uh, use of these various sources the lecture is structured in five different parts and we will go through them step by step um, uh, starting with the importance, uh, what is the guidance, um, what are the modalities to do it, what are the technical approaches and how reference level will be assessed. So let's start with the first part which is um, the idea of Red Plus and if you're doing module 3.2 I'll assume you've perhaps done some of the earlier modules which talked about Red Plus and importance and the various technical considerations um, but the basic idea of Red Plus is to provide incentives for implementing activities perhaps recall these five Red Plus activities that include reducing deforestation, reducing degradation, um, conservation of forest stocks, sustainable forest management and enhancements of carbon stocks and collectively these five activities are referred to as Red Plus. Um, so there are incentives for countries, for actors to do that. A national forest monitoring system is required also for measuring, reporting and also for the verification of the performance and as part of this, as part of your Red Plus performance reporting, every country, every region requires a benchmark and the benchmark is basically um, the, the reference of what would happen in terms of forest emissions and removals without Red Plus. Uh, and this benchmark is called a reference level. Um, the process of uh, establishing these reference levels should be informed by the policies. Um, so what policies are put in place in terms of uh, addressing these five Red Plus activities, what are implementation pathways and that should be taken into account and you can get important information on that for example from the drivers uh, assessment or from assessing your historical emissions and removals for example where have most changes happened, why have they happened, um, where are they, what are the causes uh, and what are the greenhouse gas impacts of, of, the, of those. Because if you understand what have happened before Red Plus or without Red, Red Plus, you can actually provide a reference level and you need also data to do that. Um, there are two meanings, or as often what you see is there's two acronyms. One is called FRAL, the other one is FRL. FRAL is usually a forest reference emission level and a forest reference level. And the forest reference emission level is the benchmark or the reference level for emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. So only this red only, so this is only the emissions part. Whereas the forest reference level is the benchmark for the emissions and the removals. So it's both the sinks and the sources that we have as, as forest. And that includes all red plus act activities. Um, we understand it in this module that in FRL, uh, since it includes all activities or all potential activities is inclusive of what we call the forest reference emission level and so we will use the term FRL throughout this module but you see that in practice a lot of countries at this point in time also doing just F 
are, are in forced reference emissions levels only, not including the sink component basically in there in that terms. But through the motor you will see FRL. Um, if you think about reference level, and that is conceptually, more conceptual thinking, there are kind of two objectives. Um, the first one is to have a business as usual baseline. Uh, so it's the business as usual without red plus projected emissions uh, uh, that you will have for your region, for your country. And you can use that as in tons of CO2 per year uh, and you can compare this baseline with your um, actual emissions including red plus and it's a measure of the effectiveness of these red plus interventions and also uh, for the related emission reductions or the enhanced uh, removals. Ah, so it's a very technical business as usual base, baseline. The second objective it is also what's maybe called a financial incentive benchmark. So it's it's it is these technical business as usual baselines in terms of CO2 but it's also the benchmark on where, where payments will, will be based upon. Payments could, for example, direct payments to countries, subnational units, or projects for the emissions reductions and, and, and removals. And that should be based on the different differences. Um, the reason why we're making this distinction is because there can be a difference between the two. So the first one just being a very technical um, Ton, tons of CO2, the other one being really in financial terms, and there might be ways why these are different. For example, taking into account uncertainties, taking into account certain circumstances, and, and other things. All right. Conceptually, um, and that's what I've already uh, mentioned, is that you have uh, a certain period, which is here shown in the, on the x-axis. Um, you have forest emissions on the y-axis, so you have an historical emissions and historical baseline that you can extrapolate into the future, which would be your business as usual baseline. Uh, you can then have what's called the realized path, so those are actually the measured uh, emissions with red plus. Um, there's a difference between the business as usual and the realized path, which is the, the total emission reduction, but the financial incentive benchmark uh, which is not recognized by the UNFCC discussion, but it's, we see that sometimes in practice, um, um, is some, maybe actually be different uh, uh, for different reasons. Um, and we see that in practice that because of higher uncertainties or certain considerations um, or risk management reasons, the payments might not be uh, exactly related to the full emission reduction that can be reported. This financial incentive benchmark is not really recognized in the UNFCC discussions, um, but it's very important to understand it. And since we focus here on this lecture on the UNFCC related mechanism, we will not further talk about this financial incentive benchmark. But keep that in mind that this is an important consideration as well. Let's move on then to the UNFCC context uh, for developing Red Plus reference levels. Um, basically, the modalities of that have been discussed and negotiated um, and there has been various decisions um, that for example that um, uh, the false reference level can be developed in accordance with national circumstances and respective capabilities that um, can actually have a national false reference level or false reference emission, emission level <coughs> sorry um, or you can actually start as an intermeasure with a subnational one. Now we see that a lot, for example, in uh, forest carbon partnership uh, related projects that you start on a subnational level, but the aim should be to eventually move to the national level. Um, and that you should take into account the historical data, so historical data on emissions and removals that can be adjusted for national circum circumstances. So then what should in forest reference level entail. It should be expressed in tons of CO2 per year. Well, so it's really be uh, an emission. Um, it should be consistent with your national greenhouse gas inventor inventory. Um, that it might be subnational to begin with as an interim measure. Um, that countries might use a stepwise approach, um, which is very much related to countries can start uh, with a certain scope and improve the data over time 
uh, expand their set of red plus activities over time and then there can be stepwise improvement of the reference level and the countries should update their reference level periodically if they move along with their uh, red plus implementation um, countries should also uh, submit information and the rationale for developing uh, the reference level um, so what historical data have been used, why certain choices have been made, that all the information submitted should be transparent, complete, considered, consistent and accru accurate related to the IPCC um, um, good, good, good practice guidelines. Um, that all these reference levels will be available on the UNFC Red Plus platform, which is this, and if you would like to check that out. Um, this The link is provided uh, in the notes to this lecture and you can see that there is uh, there is already some 20 something re reference levels submitted by red countries there. And the submitted reference level will be technically assessed um, by the organized by the UN Climate uh, Convention. The the reference level responds to the scope of the activities. Remember these five red plus activities um, and also the IPCC categories. So forest converted to other lands would be called deforestation. Forest remaining forest would enclose all these activities including forest degradation, enhancement of carbon stocks and so on. And you have other lands that could be converted to forest that would be called afforestation and reforestation. There's certain modules uh, that you have as part of this series. We talk about these IPCC good practice guidelines um, and basically the link is here made between them and uh, Red, Red Plus. Let's then move on for on issues relating to establishing a business as usual baseline estimation. Um, by nature these are an estimate of future greenhouse gas emissions and removals. Again, this idea of what the emissions and removals would be without Red Plus. Um, and so, to do that, you have to have a good idea on what happens in the in the past. So, data on historic deforestation, degradation, and related trends. So, time series are needed to actually do that. Uh, um, for example, on you can use historical satellite data. Um, to provide information on historical forest area changes. What is very important is that uh, you have a clear definition of forest um, and that is there are certain uh, issues related to that that you'd find in the other modules. The, the most important thing is that um, this definition determines what is actually a forest and what can be called also a deforestation uh, in that con context. Um, countries are encouraged to use the FAO definition but might uh, also deviate from that if they have if they have good reasons to do, to, do, to do so. It's important that your establishment of your business as usual is is done consistently with your national forest monitoring system and your MOV because you need data to establish that baseline and um, these data should come from your national forest mon mon monitoring system because you have to then also monitor part of your Red Plus activities ready to your MRV and there should be the same data because you need to have consistency between what you're doing in your, for your reference level estimation and what you're doing for your MRV. So it's important to really see that as an integrated, integ integral part of that. Um, you should define your scope of what activities you want to be inc included, which of these five, and you might choose which pools um, uh, carbon pools you want to include. Um, those are uh, decisions you uh, not only should make for your reference level but also basically decisions from the policy level and also decisions from um, from what are you going to report in your national greenhouse gas invent inventories. What the, what the most important message here is be consistent. So you, if you include something, a certain Red Plus activity, um, you should also report on that in your MRV uh, if you exclude certain activities or certain pools, you can also not report on them as part of your MRV. So, because at the end, one's, one will be comparing what your MRV and what you provide in your reference level on your business as, as, as usual, and that should be consistent.
You might also choose your scale, um, national or subnational, and subnational is possible um, as part of your uh, establishment, as part of your dem demonstration, as an as an interim measure. So, um, on the subnational level, you might, for example, start with certain states and provinces. Um, if you do that, um, you have to have some important considerations. You try to use harmonized criteria. Uh, try to harmonize criteria also with the national level because at some point you do want to uh, scale up because at some eventually you have to have a national reference level so you should already keep that in mind when establishing a subnational reference level that you be able to scale that up to the national level so try to build upon that as very close alignment with your national forest monitoring system using these kind of data and is assum assumptions if you only do a subnational reference level and also a subnational reporting you have to account for leakage so make sure there's no displacement of emissions from the regions that you're doing red plus on to other regions in the country that are not that you're not re re reporting on so that basically requires national monitor monitoring um, um, the it's it's some of the subnational scale activities are often good for learning by doing a, a, a approach. So you, 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 in your phase two, in your Red Plus phase two, uh, you demonstrate on how things work in practice. You might start nationally and really take your lessons learned in scaling up to the national level. Um, but again, keep in mind that you have to be consistent with what is going on nationally because you don't want to end up in a situation where you have a subnational monitoring, a subnational reference level, whatever is done nationally is disconnected and inc inconsistent because then basically you uh, run into a lot of conflicts and you will not be able to resolve that easily. So consider that uh, from the beginning. What are the data needs? Um, well, as for any reporting, uh, you need um, activity data and emission factors for the historical periods. Activity data, for example, for deforestation could be classical forest area change. Emission factors often get from national inventory type measure measurements and um, it's basically the emissions and removals for greenhouse gas unit. Um, you might also consider national circumstances. Um, so you might make the case that uh, I have my historical emissions estimation, these ones I can measure uh, using activity data and emission factors, but you might think that certain, uh, uh, for certain reasons my future, expected future emissions will be deviating from that historical trend that for example could be related to the stage in the forest transition, so um, you have countries moving from high carbon, uh, low deforestation, into uh, um, a higher deforestation range as part of this forest tra transition. You have, you know that certain drivers uh, of deforestation, forest de degradation have, you expect certain changes in, in, in those. You have certain policies um, that you put in place that, that will affect that. So these possibility exist, um, but these argumentations are often not so easy to done in practice because you have to con basically translate that into how it would affect your tons of CO2 and you have to make that in a stringent and, 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 and basically um, quantitative way. Uh -huh. um, so let's look at some of these um, uh, data sources. Well, for activity data, you know, you can look at rates of deforestation, rates of tree planting, rates of forest degradation, uh, rates of en enhancements, emission factors uh, measured from the, from the ground, removal factors, uh, and there are different modules provided in that in that series that you uh, that can help you and provide you more guidance on how to do that um, as I said there is these options that national circumstances can influence the trend um, and um, one could make the case of seeing okay whether certain countries uh, are uh, expecting higher or lower reference emissions uh, and removals compared to the to the to the past. Um, for example, the stage in the forest transition, you know, which was already mentioned, depending on what where countries is, a change in the drivers. Uh, for example, if a lot of, uh, if you can show, for example, that a lot of the deforestation in countries driven, for example, by agricultural commodity prices or by uh, yeah by commodity prices in general or by other uh, big investments uh, or, or other things that be done or other 
policies you put in place. You might argue uh, on on how on how to incorporate incorporate that. Um, these are have to be very uh, specific and have to be well documented and also empirically proven because they will quantitatively affect your your reference level. So it, this has to be done with care because you also will have to defend that in any technical assessments done by the uh, UN Climate con con Convention. So, so be very careful. Um, experience is a bit that this can be done, these adjustments can be done, but it, it ha the case has to be very well made. Um, so f as, as we have seen also in the previous modules, the available data might vary uh, by countries. Oh, so some countries already start with a lot of good data, some countries have a low quality data, low capacities and will work their way into improving those. Um, and so that's why this idea of stepwise uh, improvement, uh, starting with something, improve over, over time is also a possibility uh, and that should encourage countries to already develop a reference level, uh, start with developing this and perhaps start their red plus activities based on that re reference level and add more um, if that is, uh, if, 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 if time moves, 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 or moves on. So now let's look into approaches for estimating uh, these business as usual baseline and just like three very generic ones. Um, the one would be a strictly historical. Huh? So you would use your historical, for example, historical rates of deforestation and assume uh, and just you can take the average or you can have a certain trend in, but you assume that the historical data will, is are, are reflecting the change patterns that you also expect for the future without red plus and so you assume no change in the trend. That's the most common ap ap approach. Huh? You can have an adjusted historical approach which as we, as we have discussed these national circumstances, drivers, policies, uh, certain events that should be included um, to actually deviate from the historical trend. Uh, and you can use, use the predicted power of historical deforestation trends, for example, and try to make that happen. Um, then you actually try, you can also model deforestation and in, then, in that sense you can basically try to um, relate your historical deforestation more to the drivers and see how a change in, in, in drivers can actually affect your deforestation and you would make scenarios based on a certain expected growth in, in, in drivers and how that affect your emissions estimation. So let's dive into a bit more. Um, for this uh, strictly historical approach you have a simple trend projection. Uh, it's relatively simple. Uh, you don't need certain tribal data and for example the Brazil's forest reference level for the Amazon Basin is, is a good example of that. Brazil has good historical data and uh, basically you establish a reference level. I think it was a reference emission level in fact um, for the Amazon Basin. Um, for the um, so you basically are very data driven. Huh? You based on your data so you can ni nicely uh, also update that reference level if you have more data coming and um, and then if you then want to go to something a bit more complex so this idea of adjusted historical um, uh, approach where you um, yeah try to get some information for example of um, how you can incorporate national circumstances and you have to include some data driven reasoning for deviating uh, so, for example, if you know that certain drivers will change, if you can establish uh, relations with underlying causes, uh, population growth, um, yeah, commodity prices, um, big infrastructure uh, development, or something like, like, like that. And it's important to have a justification on why and how deforestation varies from this historical, historical trend. Um, there's more information uh, um, on an adjusted historical approach in the Red Plus Decision Toolbox provided by Win, Win, Winrock, which is a part of the background materials that we, we have provided um, provided there. Um, so for this hist adjusted historical approach, you need historical data, but you also need information on the national circumstances, so drivers, socioeconomic factors and all of that, so it's a bit more data hungry and perhaps something like the accessibility to remaining forest and, and 
and stuff like that. And often what is done, you have some re re regression analysis. So let's say relatively simple statistical approaches to try to link, ah, explain your historical drivers, uh, to historical deforestation, forest changes, and how that can change in the future. Um, so another example would be, for example, forest harvesting. Huh? If you have certain harvesting cycles and you know there is a bit of a cyclic pattern, uh, uh, or you know that you know what the harvest rates vary, and, and you can incorporate this planning uh, into the into the forward-looking emissions uh, est estimation, that might be also part of an adjusted historical approach. So, just to give an example, you have this idea where you have your data, you have certain drivers that you relate to your forest and uh, you can predict your deforestation in the, in the past. Um, and so basically um, you can try to use these empirical relations to say, okay, if I expect a certain development uh, in terms of, for example, population development and agriculture GDP, um, you can see a bit that would that would be positively affecting my deforestation and you can adjust your reference level uh, for that for that purpose. Another uh, approach is the simulation models. Um, this where country this can be done if countries have high quality data that you actually model deforestation drivers in a spatially explicit way. Um, and um, some examples are that you could actually try to uh, test different reference levels related to certain policy scenarios, for example. And there is, for example, IASA's Globio model or the Osiris modeling tool, which really uh, give you some information. That the, There is sometimes a bit of a problem that these models, um, they require assumptions. Uh, you have to make certain choices and you can end up with a whole set of likely probable scenarios for the future and the question is always which ones do you use and so sometimes it is from a political acceptability point of view these are sometimes challenged but they are valuable approaches it might be that uh, if you have the information available that you do something like like that and use it more as an informing tool rather than a quantitative one to test different policy scenarios and maybe uh, underpin some of the adjustments that you make to your his historical data based on that. So then if you think about the pros and cons of the different appro approaches that we've set, it moves from strictly historical, which is simply requires simple data. Um, and I said that's done a lot. Deviations uh, from the historical trends can be done. It requires more data and a good reasoning. Um, simulation models uh, allow also to perhaps test different policy scenarios. Um, but it's relatively com complex. You need good data and the uncertainties are um, often hard to incorporate and um, yeah so sometimes these simulation models um, 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 yeah uh, are challenged uh, more than than just a simple data driven uh, approach so if you really develop your reference level try to show that you are consistent with your national data that you use the data in the best way possible um, if you have missing data, make a plan on how to will, will use and com, combine, combine them and really try to understand how good your reference level is, what is included, what is not not, in, not, in, not included. There is this notion, that notion comes also from the UN Climate Convention, to do a stepwise approach. You start with what you have and you match the data available in, in your quality to your reference level and that will improve over over time. Uh, it is a starting point for all countries sit 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 situation and is a motivation to reduce that. Um, the stepwise approach is can include, if you think about three steps, can include all kinds of data, data sets. For example, you can start with global activity data, um, emission factors uh, using global if you have no data there. Um, I mean, basic assumption is that you should use national data. Uh, so step one might be just something where you really um, explore uh, what your historical emissions are. Um, when you move towards uh, then step two, uh, you want to use uh, IPCC approach two or tier two and tier, tier three, three data, uh, have more information on drivers, um, approaches for developing reference levels. So you can only do simple trend analysis if you have 
simple data. If you have more information, you can think about something more complex in, in interpolation and extrapolation um, in terms of adjusting um, um, uh, adjustments from the historical trends in terms of the scale. You might start subnational, but eventually you have to end up uh, on the national level. Um, you might include in step one only few red plus activities, you maybe only deforestation and then include more over over time. Um, you might start with certain pools and gases and add, add more if you want to. And in terms of the uncertainty assessment, if you use only global data or some coarsely available data, you cannot really do a very good uncertainty assessment. So you might have to use some default, deal with some default uncertainties or conservative est estimates. Um, whereas if you have better data and you also invest in data quality, um, you should also include a proper uncertainty analysis in the in the later step. So for these various criteria, um, you might think where you are in your, with your country circumstance and what are the steps that you want to take uh, to move forward. Also perhaps finding the priorities on where you where it makes sense to invest more. Then moving on to the uh, fifth uh, part of the lecture which is on the technical assessment. Um, so once a reference level is submitted, um, this will be done by the UNFCC Secretariat um, and they will also facilitate but also report on this technical assessment. Um, what should be done? Uh, the um, technical assessment will include to check the consistency uh, of the reference level with greenhouse gas inventories show how historical data have been taken into account to check to what extent the information provided is transparent, complete, consistent and accurate and that a description of changes to previously submitted reference level have taken into account the stepwise approach. Um, the technical assessment will further in include what data methods and procedures have been used so what pools, gases and activities have been included uh, and any justification of omitting certain pools, gases or act activities. That proper and consistent definitions of forests have been provided, uh, whether assumptions about future changes to domestic policies have been included, so this related to this idea of adjustments, um, and to what extent um, this information is provided with other information and descriptions provided by the country, uh, for example, the national determined contributions or something like like that. As part of the technical assessments, perhaps afterwards, there will be areas for technical improvement uh, and capacities will be that can be ident identified. And I think that's very important, in particular for countries that basically have more like a step one reference level. Um, and would like to move on. It's also very important to understand this technical assessment process as an opportunity to get feed feedback, uh, including the assessment on where weaknesses are, uh, where priorities are seen also from the international side and where improvements can be made. Again, this technical assessment is done for the reference level submitted and this process is already on ongoing. So countries have submitted reference level levels to the climate convention and these are actually being assessed, so have been assessed and updated. Uh, perhaps some countries even submitted a second reference level or, 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 or already, but that is an active process basically on ongoing. Um, so with this I would like to also summarize uh, the lecture. Um, we have the idea of forest reference levels that need to be done for assess the red plus performance. Um, it needs to be based on historical data. Uh, it can be adjusted for certain circum circumstances if that is done, it has to be ex explained well. Um, important things have to be decided for that, for example, the, the forest definition, which activity to, to, to include and um, what carbon pools to include and whether you start subnational or national. Um, and the different approaches talked about strictly historical, adjusted to historical and using more simulation models. Um, the, it is understood that circumstances of countries vary, so you can start the reference level development and along these stepwise improvements um, and that 
includes several criteria that we have talked about. These can improve and develop over 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 time. Um, the idea of the business as usual baseline for versus the financial incentive benchmark that's still under discussion or that's still being discussed, but it's important to understand that um, the reference level is really a, a technical term to begin with, how this will be compared to the actual performance and how that will be related to payment, that's basically still under discussion, but the reference level is an important part of that. Um, um, keep in mind also that reference level is about legit legitimates. It's, it, I mean, it is a political thing, and uh, so make sure that your reference level is clear, it's understood, it builds upon your best knowledge available, and um, that it also can be defended in inter international setting and in pop political debates um, in the in your international in the national setting, but also in an international setting. There are a couple of examples. For example, you can see Brazil's submission to a reference level that's been explained as part of these modules. You can download the country examples related to this module. There's also an example from Guyana. And there's also an exercise that just gives you some idea on how you can use um, develop a reference level of Indonesia using different historical data, data sets. That is not the, f the, the formal Indonesia submission of the data, of, of course, it's just an example on how you could use and choose different ac activity data to do it. Um, of course, the reference level is very important to assess the country's performance and how this is done. Uh, I would recommend you to go to module 3.3, which is on guidance, on reporting performance, and to use uh, the IPC good practice guidelines and guidance for that. and how the reference level is an important part of that. There are a bunch of references that I've referred to. They're here listed again. Most of them are online. You can download and you can dive into that topic a bit more. With that, I would like to say farewell and thank you very much for your attention.